Well, hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. And I got another quick one for you today. I have been exploring uh, white pens. Now, I did a video on the general categories of white that will work for watercolor, and I'll link to that episode if you haven't seen it. This is going to be different. This We're going to actually talk about a few brands and some things that I've discovered. And we're going to be talking about specifically about pens or white that comes in pen form. Now, if you've been interested in white pens, you know there are a ton of them out there. And you also know there are quite a few reviews on YouTube. And that's why I've held off doing any kind of a review. I've, I've been wanting to explore more options and see what's out there and educate myself a little more but also because there were so many reviews. But I did notice there's a gap in that nobody really reviews these things from a painter's standpoint, from a watercolorist standpoint. It's mostly in terms of crafting. A lot of crafters out there have done reviews. There have been some artists that have done reviews, and it's usually from a high contrast standpoint, like pen and ink or writing in crafts, that sort of thing. But if you've watched my channel very long, you know that I use these for highlight touch-ups and watercolor and so I've never actually seen there may be one I'm not saying there isn't one but I've never actually seen a review that's dealt with white pens from the standpoint of watercolors and using them in paintings to touch up highlights add in highlights that kind of a thing so let's show you what I've got what I've found this by no means is exhaustive I did look for a lot of different white pens uh, that were available. I tried to stick with well-known brands and not some of the off brands that you see here and there. Kind of fly by night, here one day, gone the next. Uh, these hopefully are brands that have been around and will stay around. So that's kind of what I stuck with. Also know these names or the name brands from dependability sake. So let's start with my go-to uh, Jelly Roll, the white gel pen and it still is pretty much a go-to there are different situations in which i use a white pen and i'm going to get into that a little bit now one thing right away that i'm not that concerned about that a lot of white pen reviews are is opacity you see a lot of reviews out there will rate these things based on how white they are and that's fine if you're you're trying to do writing and you need something to be white and pure white. Rarely does a painter ever need that. As a matter of fact, pure white uh, stands out and looks unnatural. It, it has sort of a stark bleached blue-white look to it. So that all that to say, I don't mind a gel pen or a white pen that goes down a little bit semi-translucent and can be built up a little bit. So we're going to be looking at these from that standpoint. Now there are times when I do. I do want it to be white. I just want it to go down white and I want it to be pure white from the standpoint. Hey, this is a good example. This is a little piece I did during October, this waterfall. And as I was drawing in the trickling water, it was really helpful to have it just be pure white. But that said, I still don't mind stroking in a couple times just to build it up. And I don't mind a little subtlety where in some places it's not perfectly white. It's just a nice option to have when you're drawing. And it's no different in watercolor. Let's take a quick look at the Jelly Roll. I get asked so many times what gel pen am I using. And usually it's this one. I like that it comes in three sizes. So you can read it. Jelly with a G. This is their bold. And these, these bold were new over the last year or two, I think. So this is their 10. Pretty nicely opaque. Now I will add, and this is a, another situation having to do with watercolor. On paper, such as this black uh, sketch journal usually uh, gel pens perform the best because it's an absorbent paper I have this over here which is watercolor paper that I saturated with fairly heavy pigment and that makes a difference because the moisture when while these go down wet the moisture will sometimes pick up watercolor and it will clog the pen and I have that happen with jelly rolls a lot of times though I will just keep backups i have probably a dozen of, of these pens in every size because if one stops working i'll just grab a different one usually you'll see the problem uh, of it lifting watercolor pigment when you go to start coloring this in although i'm not having any trouble with the bold it tends to be the finer ones and in fact these usually are so bold let me get the medium out here this is the eight the 08, known as their medium. Doesn't put down as much white, and so it therefore is not as bold or not as opaque, but usually still plenty so. 
I like uh, build up to the point where a lot of times as I'm putting this down before it dries, I'll pat it with my finger to pick some of it back up. I mean, a good example is this little sketch here, a little watercolor sketch I did back during the 30-30 challenge. So let's say I want to highlight the edge of this rock. And a lot of times I'll go back in and just pat it with my finger because I'm trying to keep that from being too stark linear white but you see I, I've made a nice little contrast improvement there on that edge or maybe I'll just brush off the end oh one other comment too everything I am reviewing today is waterproof there are a number of gel pens out there that are not and I shy away from them I, let me just go ahead and bring that up right now. This is a popular one with a lot of artists, this Uniball Signo, and that's fine if you're not going to go over it, but I don't use it even though it's a nice opaque white because uh, water lifts it. I almost always, or in many cases, glaze over this white with color so that it doesn't look so, so bleach chalky white. So it's important for me to have them waterproof and everything I show you today is waterproof. So the Uniball Signos, uh, every time I mention gel pens I have people say, oh I love the Uniball Signo. Good, glad you love it. It is not for me. I like my pens to be waterproof. All right here and this is the 05, uh, the fine. Now, this is the one I have the most problems with skipping or stopping, although it's still pretty reliable. Again I love jelly rolls because they're easy to find find them in most craft stores. It's by Sakura. Sakura is a pretty well-known writing instrument and drawing instrument company. A lot of what they make is very reliable. I like having this option of having fine, medium, and bold. I don't use gel pens very much in finished studio art. It's mostly in sketching or studies. Um, I'm more likely to use a gouache, which I know is not waterproof, but at least gouache I can tint to the right color. Or if I want to uh, glaze over it in a finished studio painting, I'll, I'll a lot of times use acrylic. Although I've gotten the gel pen just out of laziness, I've gotten the gel pen out even on studio work. Let's see already that just feels a little bit too stark to me and I'll, I would probably go back and just touch over that with a little bit of paint. So the Jelly Roll gel pen still my first go-to. Every time I go out on location to do plein air I always have one of these with me. A new one that I found oh maybe a couple months ago and I think is not bad is the Pentel Milky Pop. This is their medium they may have other weights. I've only been able to find medium. It's not quite as white and opaque as the Jelly Roll, but I actually like that. And I've, I've been pulling this out more and more just to see. And I, as I mentioned, I just, I don't mind building up white. I feel like that gives me more control. Now, if you have trouble with these clogging or skipping or stopping, you can keep a, like a sponge, wet sponge nearby, because until they completely dry, they are water soluble. Uh, another thing that you can do, this is just a piece of the Magic Eraser, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Um, and you can get this damp. I use just kept, usually just keep it dry because it's somewhat abrasive. And it just kind of rubs that off. If you don't mind getting white on your fingertips, just patting it quickly before it dries is a good way to knock it back to less than pure white or reduce the opacity of it. I do that a lot. Another uh, tip I've also noticed that gliding these over the surface works better than bearing down. It's tempting to take and try to bear down on these to get them you know to, to really write. tend to have them clog more when I do that. Two good gel pens that I've been using a lot. That's all I'm going to cover on gel pens. There's a ton of them out there as I mentioned. There are a lot of good reviews out there. But I wanted to get into some of the categories I've been exploring more lately and that's uh, markers. Let's talk about pit. Everybody knows about or probably has seen the big wet white fat pit artist pen. Pit is a Faber-Castell marker and the Pit 101 makes this big fat. Now the, I rarely ever use this in watercolor. I mainly only use this in sketchbooks, particularly toned sketchbooks like this one. 
like this background added around this little sketch. It's just a great way to add contrast in a big wide area. You know, it's great to have one of these on hand. I, I, I'm not saying I won't ever use it in the sketch, in a watercolor sketch, but so far I haven't. But now, I uh, just recently saw these. This is a set called the uh, Pit Artist Pen Black and White set, and it includes one very fine black and three white pens. One is a chisel tip for calligraphy. Some people use uh, calligraphy tips to draw with, or you can letter with it. That's a pretty decent lettering tip. And there is the 1.5, which is a bullet tip. And again, just a smaller version of this if you need to add some bold white somewhere. I don't mind using this little sketch here as a guinea pig. So I'm, I'm just curious if I wanted to add some bold white, how that would work, and it, well, it seems to do fine. And it even stays damp for a minute or two, so you can pat it, maybe blend it, or leave it stark white. Drives waterproof. And the third white pen in the set is this brush which is just a slightly flexible brush tip. And this one is probably the most interest to me. It's not super fine, but you can go thick to thin, as you can with most, most brush pens. Now, so far, I haven't been able to find these in open stock. I'm assuming they have them, but I have not found any place that sells these yet, these uh, three white pens, because I'd love to pick up several of these brush pens or or 1.5. I've only seen them in this black and white set. If that's to interest you, it's a Faber-Castell product and it uh, seems to be a pretty good product. And so far uh, that I've tested, every one of these you can glaze color over, which for me is extremely useful. A category that I'm seeing a lot more of than I ever used to now are the paint markers. It's like a combination of a marker and a paint pen. Paint in the barrel and you're probably familiar with these. These have actually been around for a while but usually most of them are really bold tips. I'm seeing more and more of these uh, being produced as fine tips. This is a Sakura Pen Touch. Dries quickly, it's permanent, waterproof, and uh, a lot of these are activated at first by pressing down on the tip to allow paint to flow into the tip. This is super white and opaque. So this is gonna be a situation where you need good bright white, maybe in a pen and ink uh, setting or use. This is sort of a medium to bold weight, I would say. A light touch will get you a fairly fine line. You can feather the stroke like you can with pen and ink. Uh, when you're coloring in, and this is uh, I think where the beauty of a paint marker comes in, you get nice opaque bold white. Let's see how my little padding technique works. It works works equally well on this as long as you get it. If you want to knock back the opacity as long as you get it before it's dry. It's a pretty nice alternative. If you don't mind a fairly bold pen. This one is called the Deleter Neopico. Deleter makes a number of liner, black liners. They make a, a Deleter ink which is popular among uh, comic artists. A white ink. This Neo Pico was probably, I think, the most opaque and it had a nice fine line. You see here, if I do a feather stroke, I can get quite fine. So it does give you a little thick and thin. If I go more up on the tip and slower, and painting in the solid white is very opaque. Good alternative. Now I'm going to look at a group here. And I was real pleased uh, when I went to my local art store to find out they had a whole rack of Posca products in various colors and they had the white. I've heard of the Posca pen and I've heard that it's popular with a lot of artists but I had no idea they had this many different kinds. Going back to the watercolor paper here, you can see the difference. The Sakura Pen Touch is not nearly as opaque. Now, as I've mentioned before, that may actually make me reach for that one if I'm trying to build up color gradually. But if I need a bright white, opaque, like in pen and ink or sketchbook work where I'm using pen and ink on, on white paper, where I want to get white down quickly, that's a really good option. Now they had several sizes. This is the 0.7. Their next size up was this bullet. This is also listed as a 0.7, but it has a bullet tip. So 
you can get some fat lines as well as if you bring it up on the tip. Really was pleased that I found so many of these pens that are waterproof. And here's the big fat chisel marker. Now I like this, uh, you know, when you contrast this to the pit pen, the big fat pit pen, I like the chisel because you can get this fat edge or you can come on the tip of the edge and do this or get an in-between size with that. And it's a bit more opaque than this pit fat one. Seems to work great in watercolor paper with watercolor applied. Yeah, so that's an eight millimeter. So those are the Posca. Actually, there's one more Posca and this is going to segue me into the last category and that's brush, true brush. And I was really pleased to find this. This is a true brush marker with true brush fibers. Okay, you can get pretty fine, not super fine, but you can get fairly fine. And again, quite opaque. And that segues me into these, which is the last one I wanted to show you today. And these are the Kurataki Zig brush pens. Um, I really like the idea of these. Uh, I have had trouble though getting them to start or flow consistently, but it is a true brush without a white ink. Does the things that a brush will do. Really like this this option. Um, the smaller one here, I had trouble getting it, and I'm still having trouble getting it to flow as fully as that. Both of these I had to take apart and sort of ream out some of the gunk in the barrel. So I have found that you can dip the tip in water a little bit to keep them flowing. Doesn't It uh, kind of cuts back on the opacity. And of course, uh, as with most color brush pens, you pump here and you'll get a little more ink to the surface or to the tip. I'm not how, sure how much I am going to use this. I really love the design and idea of it. I just wish they performed a little more reliably. And before I decide, I may actually order uh, another one or two of these because sometimes you just get bad ones that don't work well. I think the only time I would use these is a situation where I didn't want to get out uh, brush and white ink. I just wanted to quickly add white as a brush. And frankly, uh, the Posca brush. I thought worked a whole lot better. So I love Zig Kirtaki. I'm just having a little trouble getting these to work consistently. All right, I hope this quick episode was helpful to you, gave you some ideas, maybe you identified something you didn't know about. If you have any questions about using white like this on or how I use it, be sure to leave those questions down in the comments and we'll talk about it. Or if you have a suggestion, recommendation, go ahead and leave that too. Thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, patrons. You are the lifeblood of this channel, and I appreciate it so much. And we will see everybody in the next video.